This button, this little button caused me about 2 trillion years of stress and headache. If you've been a subscriber to my channel for a while now, you're probably aware of what's going on in my Let's Play world. I'm always up to some kind of project, and this world will eventually be released for public access. For those of you who are new, this is a massive airport that I'm building. It's not even close to being finished, and it's gonna be good, trust me. So subscribe if you're new to keep up. This isn't a traditional airport you see in other videos where everything's static. These aircraft actually fly. There's NPCs, there'll be duty-free shops, etc, etc. So if you're only into vanilla Minecraft, you probably won't like this video if I'm to be honest with you. But if you do like mods and you've caught the mod bug like me, you'll probably like it. Anyway, let's talk about this button. This button has caused me a ton of grief. You know how you have those little bridges? Like those, they're called jet bridges that you walk on to board aircraft. Well, I wanted to make it as realistic as possible. Therefore, I wanted to make it so you can board the aircraft via the jet bridge. And as you can see, it works a charm. I can walk right into the aircraft as you normally would. What's cool is that you can actually board the aircraft and take a seat. You can fly these bad boys too. But if you want to see me fly in the plane, you can in an upcoming Let's Play. Now here lies the problem. I can get in the aircraft, I can start it, but now I've blocks in the way. These blocks make the aircraft stuck, so while they serve one purpose, they stop your ability to fly. Not only that, in real life, these jet bridges would also retract anyway. How do we navigate around this? An elaborate redstone contraption could work, but that would look really ugly. I mean, look how clean this looks. Can you imagine ruining it by adding redstone? So I was trying to figure out the next best thing. Aha! Command blocks. This is great, but there's one problem. You can't put multiple strings of command within one command block, only one. So if I assign a button to make a command, that button essentially cannot do anything else. So after a trillion years of problem solving, my little brain thought, what if I make two buttons? and have a command on each. And each button has a chain of command blocks which resets the previous button's action. Genius! But now there's a problem. Because this jet bridge isn't perfectly square, I'll need multiple command blocks to have the shape of the jet bridge as you see it now. So having a ton of command blocks would look as ugly as a big redstone contraption. Great, back to square one. Or are we? Why not make the storeroom looking thing next to the jet bridge to house the blocks? Perfect. But wait, we won't be able to fill all the blocks in here. <sighs> Time to get all complex up in here. We'll need a way to remotely create commands where we have large access. Oh my gosh. Why don't I make a block to spawn a redstone block elsewhere where there's more room? Boom! Here's the contraption. Now, obviously because I'm testing, this room looks ugly, but once I have a solution to this, it will look more like a control room. So bear with me. Anyway, I've placed the buttons here so you can see how it works. It's programmed to reset the button. Otherwise, if you spawn the redstone and it stays, you'll need to physically break it each time. It's not practical. Basically, where I place a block, it runs to fill commands for the terminals to open or close. And it also runs a command to self-destruct its block, leaving it available to rerun the command infinitely. Makes sense? No? Well, if this video does well, it'll make dollars, so even better. Anyway, I then thought to myself, Erhan, are you really going to settle for two switches? In real life, this would be one on and off switch. So after having a good talk to myself like a psycho person, I decided we need change in our lives. We need to get these buttons married. The only problem is both buttons are male and we are in 2005. Combining these lovers is just not possible at this moment in time, but we need to find a solution. Back to the drawing board. Bingo! What if we have two contraptions linked together, and what we'll do is we'll add an additional two command blocks to run a command to delete one of its own redstone lines, thus breaking the circuit, and add a cable to the other row of command blocks. In theory, this is perfect, but like all good things in life, if it seems really good, then it's probably too good to be true. I ran it, it glitched out, and it just wasn't working. Because this was a glitch and it does different things all the time, can't really replicate it to show you because obviously I've deleted it. Uh, needless to say, I was upset. <sighs> but I can't be defeated yet. Many hours of trying to find a solution, I thought of another solution. Behold, a four-way command system. This button will alternate in a clockwise direction. I've kept this apparatus and it works like this. Pretend this block is the jet bridge, opening and closing. And here's the button. So basically when we press the button, here's what happens. 
it sets the redstone block here, right? Pretend that's a redstone. What'll happen is that'll give a signal over here, right? That signal will be the fill command. In this case, this block, we'll remove that block. So that'll be the fill command to put that block over there, right? That block obviously represents the jet walk. Then once that happens, I've set this command to remove the redstone block, right? At the same time, the clockwise redstone wire is on, which obviously feeds a signal over there and it also deletes itself, right? So that means this power is obvious, well, it's not powered anymore, right? And then basically the process repeats itself. Crazy, isn't it? Well, here it is in action anyway. Pay attention to the redstone, the redstone dust, and the block over there. It's like magic, the fiasco is done. We have a solution. Time to copy this and make it a functional piece of equipment. So I copy this contraption, go on over elsewhere, I dig a massive hole, paste it, bam, here's my contraption. For now, ignore these repeaters, I'll get into them in a moment. Also, this area will be changed to a proper maintenance room too, so don't worry about how ugly it looks. Anyway, in excitement, I set up the contraption and linked the commands to my jet bridge. I even made a mock-up so I can easily repeat the process for other jet bridges because as you can imagine, there's lots of them. So uh, repeating this is gonna, you know, take time. Uh, and this is gonna help in the process. I won't bore you with the details as to why they're color coded, etc. but I got a little system which makes this a lot quicker than what it would be otherwise. Anyway, time to run this baby then go to bed because I'm tired and I have a headache. I confidently hit the switch and bam, to my absolute horror, it started glitching again. After an hour of trying to troubleshoot, I couldn't. Rows of blocks were skipping, I could not figure out why, I even tried to rearrange the block in the same shape as the concept design, like the exact same shape. That didn't help either. Back to square one. So then I decided to put a repeater before the destruction command blocks to slow down the signal because, you know, as you can see, it's quite, it's happening all quickly. I don't know why I thought that would work, but it didn't. After contemplating life and what the meaning of the universe was, it hit me. The silliest idea ever. Why don't I just put more repeaters? Because if one didn't work, surely more than one would work, right? That was serious in my logic, like the stupidest logic ever. Anyway, I guess when you're desperate, you'll try anything, right? So then I just did it. I mean, whatevs, right? Behold, it works. It then dawned on me that the speed in which the commands were operating and self-destructing was probably glitching the system, causing errors. Slowing it down made it work. I then realized, after all, I probably didn't need the four-way setup because all along it was the annoying glitch. So I went to set up another mock-up just to make sure it works with only two strings of commands. And bam, what do you know, it works flawlessly. The blocks just cycle between one and the other and that's exactly what we want. So if we now go to our terminal to try it out, this is how it looks. So this enables us to walk onto the aircraft, take our seat, and as the pilot, we can close and open the jet bridge as you can see. So when we pull up to parking, we can gain access to the terminal directly from the aircraft. And how cool is this? So that's the story of the most ambitious button in Minecraft. It made me a little crazy, but through perseverance, we achieved. We made a single button do two functions. Now, if you understand Minecraft, which you probably do, you'll appreciate that, you know, that's quite a feat. If you don't understand Minecraft, well, just take my word for it. This was a feat. Now, just an FYI, this airport is still bare bones. There's much more to do, including tidying up, uh, adding stuff, etc. So if you want to be part of the journey, consider subscribing. I will be doing a video soon where I'll take subscribers for a flight through our Minecraft world, and it'll be loads of fun as well. But yeah, that's, that's basically that, guys. And um, it was definitely, um, it took a lot of time. Uh, to get this done, which is why I wasn't doing live streams, uploading in that in addition to a lot of work that I've had to do otherwise. Uh, yeah, there was, there was a lot, but we've passed this massive hurdle and now we've got a functioning system, which I'm super proud of. And also, if you are new to the channel, uh, my videos normally have face cam. So if you want to see a little face reveal, uh, check out one of my other videos. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. And until next time, be awesome.